الحمد لله الحمد لله القائل يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى الآل وصحب الكرام يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ألا فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكما ورد عند الترمذي في الرواية وكل ضلالة في النار ألا فاتقوا الله عباد الله وتمسكوا من الإسلام بالعروة الوثقى واحذروا غضب الرب فإن أجسادكم على النار لا تكوى أو سفن صف الله and O children of Adam, we begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we begin in His name. We do so seeking His blessings and we do so for He is most deserving of all praises. And we request praises and blessings as well from Allah to our master and leader, the ultimate teacher, Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the one who brought to us the glad tidings when one of the greatest gifts from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala arrived and descended upon us the month of Ramadan, the one who said, Atakum Ramadan, Shahrun Mubarak. The month of Ramadan has come to you. Indeed, it is a blessed month. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, in the weeks leading up to Ramadan, we spoke about Ramadan. And subhanallah, last Sunday at sunset, and then the following Monday, Ramadan knocked our doors in earnest, sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A God sent gift, a gift bearing within it gifts, a month dubbed as Kareem, as generous, for indeed it is the gift that keeps gifting. Not only is it a gift in and of itself, for it is indeed the month of mercy. Allah in it, he forgives countless people from the hellfire and the numbers only increase as the nights of Ramadan progress. The month in and of itself is a month chosen by Allah to be the month in which Allah forgives countless people from the hellfire. It is a gift in and of itself, but then it came to us with gifts. And from these gifts that it came with when it knocked our doors last Sunday was the gift of Riyan. Subhanallah, a gate from the gates of Jannah. The gates from the gates of Jinan, the gates from the gates of paradise, a gate dedicated to the one who fasts. The Ramadan comes with the obligation of fasting as if it has come to give us the visa. It has come to give us the pass. It has come to give us the permission to enter through a gate that no one will enter except the one who fasts. La ilaha illallah. That with the coming of Ramadan, our opportunity to enter Jannah only increases. For there is the gate of Salah, and for those who pray, they have that gate. But Alhamdulillah, now they have another gate as well. And that is the gate of fasting and Siyam. For the gate of fasting and Siyam is known as the gate of Rayyan. It came to our doors last Sunday 
knocking our doors with the gift of two happinesses. For the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, لِلصَّائِمِ farhatan." For the one who fasts, they receive two happinesses. The first happiness is when they break their fast. After going through a day of giving up their food and their drink and their desires for the sake of one Allah, Al-Ahad, Al-Samad, Al-Ladhi Lam Yalid Wa Lam Yulad Wa Lam Yakul Lahu Kufuwan Ahad Allah, the Lord, the one who is one in His worship and His Lordship and His names and attributes. We gave up our drink, our food, our desires for the sake of that one Lord. Allah says, for the fasting person is a happiness. A happiness when they break their fast. And yes, no doubt, a happiness for the quench that they receive to their thirst, for the filling that they receive for their hunger, but also, subhanallah, for the blessings that comes at the time when you break that fast, for the dua that Allah promises you that will go unanswered, that will go answered, it will not go unanswered, afwan, a dua that will not go unanswered. The fasting person, before he breaks his fast or her fast, when they raise their hands and they ask from the lords of the worlds, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises that that dua will be answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not just answered, but in a manner far better than the seeker asks from Allah. For Allah's knowledge supersedes the knowledge of the one asking. And sometimes we ask for something that we feel is better for us, but Allah knows it's not good for us. Allah knows there's something else better for us. Allah takes that dua and He converts it to the better. This is a happiness He gives the fasting person. But also, the happiness of forgiveness. For Allah forgives the fasting person when the fasting person breaks his fast. One of the happinesses out of the two happinesses that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the fasting person. Ramadan knocked our doors last Sunday with this gift, the gift of this happiness. And as for the second happiness, Allah says it's the happiness when my slave meets me, when the slave of Allah meets Allah on the day of Qiyamah, a day that is known to have events of such fury, a day when the screams of the hellfire and the heat of the hellfire, forget about the sight of the hellfire, just the heat of it will be felt even though a people will be so far away from it. And that day, subhanallah, that only brings to you the opportunity to feel fear. Allah says on that day, the fasting person will, will experience happiness. Happiness when they meet their Lord. Why? For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward them for their fast on that day. A reward befitting of Allah's mercy befalling his slave subhanah. That Allah says the rewards of every other act of worship are set and multiplied based on our intentions except for the fast. The fast is for Allah and Allah will reward his slave as he wills on that day, on the day of Qiyamah when his slave meets him. And this is just some of the gifts, subhanAllah, that Ramadan knocked our doors with last Sunday. It came with fasting and it also came with Quran. In fact, subhanAllah, Quran preceded the fast for we, bang, we, we, we began the Taraweeh and we began Surah Al-Baqarah, we began Surah Al-Fatiha, we began reciting the Quran. Indeed Ramadan came with the Quran for the month of Ramadan is the month of Al-Quran. Shahru Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi Al-Quran. The month of Ramadan is the month in which Allah revealed the Quran. And it's not one of those guests that will burn us out even though it is demanding. It's a guest that demands but doesn't burn us out. Why doesn't it burn us out? Because Ramadan is not that guest that demands from us for the benefit of Ramadan. It is the guest that pushes us. It demands from us for the benefit of us ourselves subhanallah a guest that pushes you for you can never burn you out it will keep you up at night it will keep you hungry during the day but wallahi wa billahi wa tallahi ramadan doesn't do it for its own benefit it does it for your benefit in this life and then your benefit in the grave and then your benefit when you are raised on the day of resurrection la ilaha illallah this is from the gifts of ramadan ramadan progresses with us in a way that may tire us in a way that may, may make us lose weight but 
But subhanallah, we don't feel underpowered, rather we feel empowered. As the month progresses, we might lose more weight, we might feel more tired. But subhanallah, the energies that we feel have depleted, they are only physical. In reality, they are replenished with a different power, a different energy. And that is the energy of Iman, belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the energy of being detached from the physical and being attached to the metaphysical, being detached from the temporary and becoming attached to the permanent for Ramadan pulls us away forcefully from food and drink and desires that are part of the physical lifestyle of this world and it connects us to Jannah and the acts of Jannah that are baqiyatu salihat the acts that will remain they will be with us in this life we will get the blessings from them whilst we are alive and when we die we will see the blessings of them in our grave and when we raise on the day of Qiyamah we will see the blessings with us on the day of Qiyamah and when we are driven to Allah these blessings will be with us we discuss in the tafsir how Surah Al-Baqarah and Al-Imran and Nahrawain, the two bright lights will be flocking above us for those who are from the family of Al-Baqarah and Al-Imran, defending us, arguing on our behalf when we are driven to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The benefits subhanallah, they are long lasting until the slave finally takes his step into Jannah, a place that no eye has seen, no heart has ever dreamt of and no ear has ever heard of, subhanallah. This is the reality of Ramadan. O servants of Allah, and it will only increase. And our mashayikh will teach us, inshallah, during the remaining Fridays about the other gifts of Ramadan. Because as we approach the last 10, وَلَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ What will make you understand the last 10 of Ramadan? The best nights of the year, the chosen nights by Allah, and then the gifts of those nights. And then one of those nights houses a night, subhanallah, that gives us the proposition of living the lifespans of prophets like Nuh alayhi salam without having to live the stress of this world for living hundreds and thousands of years. One night better than 83 years, not equal to 83 years, better than 83 years. Wallahi, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, just one year of our life, how stressful is it? And as we get to the end and the day of Qiyamah, how stressful has life become? Imagine if we had to build the Jannah of a thousand years by living a thousand years on earth. What predicament would we be in? Allah brings us these last 10 to help us build a Jannah spanning thousands of years, but living only 60 to 70 years. And even 10 to 15 years of the 60 to 70, you're forgiven anyway, because you haven't reached the age of puberty. This is the month of Ramadan, and this is the mercy of our Lord. Yes, Ramadan is generous, and it is the month of mercy. But let's not forget the absolutely perpetual one, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Allah subhanahu, who favored us and brought to us the month of Ramadan. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil wahiyin, wa nafa'ni wa iyaakum bi hadhi sayyidi thaqalain, laqad qultu ma qult, wa astaghfirullah al-azim al-jalila li wa lakum, wa li sa'iri al-muslimina min kulli dhambi wa khati'ah, fastaghfiruh, innahu kana ghaffara, wa tubu ilayh, innahu kana tawwabah. Inna alhamdulillah, نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله وخيرته من خلقه صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن سار على نهجه واكتفى أثره ودعا بدعوته إلى يوم الدين فإنه تركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك أما بعد فاتقوا الله عباد الله واتقوا يوما ترجعون فيه إلى الله ثم توفى كل نفس ما كسبت وهم لا يظلمون O servants of Allah and O children of Adam Our month as it is Kareem it is also the month of Taqwa and Taqwa is ultimately the objective of Ramadan and why would it not be the objective when Ramadan only wants for us Jannah and Taqwa is the key to Jannah? You see, O oh servants of Allah, in Surah al dhariyat Allah tells us, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنْسِ لِمَاذَا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ That you were not created except to worship Allah. But if you ask the question, O oh servant of Allah, 
that Ya Allah, you created me to worship you. I am intrigued, I have a question. Why Ya Allah? You are perfect from ever. You are perfect forever. My worship doesn't increase your majesty. My sin does not decrease your majesty. Why do I have to worship you Ya Allah? Allah answers that question in Surah Al-Baqarah. Ya ayyuhal nasu abudu, rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum, walladhina min qablikum, la'allakum tattaqun. Ya ayyuhal nas, O mankind, worship your Lord, alladhi khalaqakum, the one who created you, and the one who created those before you. Why? La'allakum tattaqun. So that you may benefit yourself. So that you may create a barrier between you and the hellfire. And through that you will receive a key to enter a paradise. A paradise that Allah created for those who He created. The righteous from them. Because Allah is just. This is ultimately the objective of Ramadan. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ And this is what Ramadan pushes us to with every obligation that it brings upon us. And not just the obligations, but also the recommendations. Fasting for taqwa. Stand the night for taqwa. Read the Quran for taqwa. Be charitable for taqwa. And so on and so forth. It's for taqwa. And what will make you understand the reality of a taqwa? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us with a taqwa. You see my brothers and sisters in Islam, if you read the Qur'an, how many times will you find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioning fasting? How many times will you find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioning Ramadan? But how many times do you find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioning taqwa? When do we repeat something? When we speak to our children, we repeat an instruction that they know. That we know that they know. That we know they haven't forgotten. But we feel within us a need to keep repeating it. If they have the GCSEs, we tell them, make sure you study. Have you studied? Are you sure you studied? Let me check your work. Have you done your studies properly? We keep on talking about study, 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 study. Why? Because it's important. Because it's important. Allah repeats taqwa. More times than he repeats fasting. More times than he repeats Ramadan. You see my brothers and sisters in Islam, when Ramadan is coming, naturally, as human beings, we feel trepidation. And Allah reveals to us the presence of this trepidation in insan. Because when he revealed the verses of fasting, he said, fast. But he didn't leave it like that. He said, Kama kutiba min qablikum. This is from the mercy of the Quran. That when you hear you have to fast, you might subhanallah feel this trepidation. Leave my food, leave my drink, what will happen to me? Allah is merciful. He revealed, Kama kutiba ala ladina min qablikum. Don't panic. It was revealed to people before you. They were humans like you and they managed. We naturally feel being hungry is hard. We naturally feel having less sleep is hard. And people say this, Wallah, the sleep, it's less. I have to work. I have to school. I have to fasting. But O oh servant of Allah, the Quran is telling you, O oh servant of Allah and O oh child of Adam, Ramadan is not hard. Fasting is not hard. Taqwa is hard. That's why it's repeating taqwa, 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 taqwa. And as part of your objectives for this month of Ramadan to achieve taqwa, I want to leave you with four action points. I know our time is short, but I won't get time with you again unless, un, uh, uh, until the last ten because I do travel. May Allah bring me safely to you and preserve us all in his obedience. Amen. To aid our journey towards taqwa in this month, I leave you with four action points. Number one, O servants of Allah, Qiyamul Layl. Salatul Layl. Do not waste the night and ensure you are part and parcel of the Salah. If you can't make it to the Jama'ah, stand yourself and pray. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prayed by himself and the Sahaba gathered for the first night and the gathering got bigger for the second night and then it got bigger then he didn't come out Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they were waiting for him. He prayed by himself and left them to pray by themselves. And when they asked him, he said, I fear that Allah will make this compulsory upon you and it will become a matter that you won't manage. This is from the mercy of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because it was beautiful to see people coming together to worship Allah throughout the night. And we know the prayer of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was long. In one raka'ah, Baqarah, and Al-Ma'idah, and Al-Nisa, and Al-Imran, in one raka'ah, in that order, La ilaha illallah. Do not waste the prayer of the night. And if we look into the books of fiqh, we don't see any difference of opinion regarding Salatul Layl fi Ramadan being a part of Ramadan. Huwa amrun musallam. 
This is the words of the fuqaha. It is a matter that is agreed upon. Nobody argues this matter. That what they discuss in the books of fiqh is which is better. To pray the first half of the night or the last half of the night. This is what they discuss. And Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu an, when he gathered the ummah behind Ubay ibn Ka'b for this taraweeh that we perform, he smiled at seeing the Muslims together praying. And he said, those who are praying, this is good. And those who pray in the last third, this is better. This is what the fuqaha discuss. So do not miss the night prayer. Prepare for it. Prepare your heart for it. Prepare your mind for it. Do not become affected that the imam, he took extra two seconds in his ruku and his sujood. He pulled a mad here and a hunna here. Don't let this be your mandate. For wallahi you are upon khair. And where you are is better than where you need to go to. And wherever you need to go to, the Allah who you're worshipping in Qiyamul Layl is going to help you in that matter that you need to get to. So look after the night prayer, O servant of Allah. Number two, recite the Quran. And as much as you can. The pious before us, they used to keep their eyes on the Quran. Stuck to the Quran. They would not peel their eyes away from the Quran in Ramadan. Imam Shafi'i used to read 60 completions in Ramadan. Two completions a day, subhanallah. Their eyes were peeled to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because it's not only the month of fasting, it is the month of Al-Quran. For every letter you get a hasana, and a hasana is equal to 10. And this is a season of worship where your 10 will be multiplied even more. Your reading in Ramadan is better than your reading outside of Ramadan. And you might not get another Ramadan. We are here on a journey to Allah. The one who looks after Ramadan is the one who knows that they are on a journey to Allah, not a journey to the dunya. So look after your relationship with the Quran. Number three, look after your siyam. Protect your fast. The pious before us used to practice luzum al-masjid. Yes, the last 10, they would stay the whole time in the masjid. But before that even, they would try and be in the masjid for as much as they could. Why? The masjid, there's no trading in the masjid. There's no speaking about worldly affairs in the masjid. Through that, they would protect their suyam. That they never engage in a discussion that might be borderline ghibah. Subhanallah. Might be borderline lying. Subhanallah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever does not leave false speech and is equivalent, then Allah is not in need of you leaving your food and your drink. Remember, the objective of your fast is taqwa. Where is the taqwa when you're lying and gossiping and backbiting? They would do luzum al-masjid. They would come and spend as much time in the masjid. Why? Because the masjid is away from vice. It's a place surrounded by malaika. Look after your siyam. Be conscious about your fast. Be conscious. People might say you're a bit extreme. You're getting up and leaving a gathering where there might be borderline ghibah. Let them be say what they want about you. You love them, but you love Allah more. Yeah? You love them, but you love Allah more. If you have to choose between your fast and someone, choose your fast. Look after your fast, O servant of Allah. Number three. Number four, as sadaqah Walau bishiqqi tamrah. Be charitable with your wealth. We saw in Surah Al-Baqarah what Allah said, وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ Being connected to the people of taqwa and the people of falah. Being charitable. And when Allah talks about as-salah, He talks about zakah. وَأَقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُوا الزَّكَاةَ We heard this in the first night as well. Establish the prayer and give your zakah. Be charitable. Worship Allah with your charity. The pious before us, they would spend. And I'm not talking about zakah. This whole idea of zakah being connected to Ramadan is a later phenomenon. The books of fiqh never discuss zakah in Ramadan. In fact, the fuqaha, the scholars of Islamic jurisprudence, when they discuss zakah, they speak about it being a part of Muharram or a part of the sixth month of the year, not Ramadan. The pious before us used to give the haqq of the poor to the poor and the needy and the recipients of zakah before Ramadan so they could busy Ramadan with sadaqah. Subhanallah. Today, we keep our zakah in Ramadan. It's allowed. But then even when it's to be charitable, we only think within the borders of zakah. If I have zakah, I will give. If I don't have zakah, wallah, it's too hard for me. Ramadan is kareem. Where is your kareem? Ramadan is kareem. Where is your kareem? Where is your tawakkul in Allah? Where is the other worship of the heart? Allah is calling you to countless avenues to trade with Allah. And you are choosing the dunya over Allah in a month that Allah has brought to you to teach you to choose the akhirah over the dunya. So be charitable. And the best, all the acts of charity. The masjid is trying to raise funds for the extension. They're looking for a, uh, a group of people to raise an amount of money 
This is part and parcel of the month and the, one of the greatest acts, Sadaqatul Jariyah and building a house of Allah on earth for Allah to build you a house in Jannah. The wife of Firaun asked Allah, Rabbi ibn li indaka baytan fil Jannah. Allah mentioned her dua in the Quran that oh Allah build for me a house with you in Jannah. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said whoever facilitates a masjid, Allah will facilitate for them a house in Jannah. All types of sadaqah, but particularly feeding. Feeding. And again, sadaqah, not zakah. Yes, zakah is the right of the recipient, but there's poor people who you can feed with sadaqah as well. The salaf used to focus on feeding because of the hadith, man fattara sa'iman. Kana lahu mithlu ajri. That the one who feeds a fasting person will get the reward of the fast without Allah reducing the, the, the reward of the one who fasted. But the salaf, the sahaba before us, they wouldn't focus only on those who are fasting. The poor people in general. So fear the hellfire even if it's with a portion of a date in sadaqah. Give what you can. Even if it is a small amount. And don't feel it's a small amount, it has no value. For wallahi, it's not about the small amount. It's about the taqwa from the small amount. It's not about the small amount. It's about the greatness of the one who the amount is for. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept what has passed of our month and bless what remains. Ameen. Ya Rabbil Alameen. May Allah accept our beginning and make our end stronger than our beginning. Ameen. Ibad Allah. Inna Allah amarukum bi amrin qad bada'a fihi bi nafsi wa thanna fihi bi malaikatihil kiram faqala ta'ala qawlan kareema inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما وقد قال صلى الله عليه وسلم من صلى علي صلاة واحدة صلى الله عليه بها عشرة اللهم فصل وسلم وبارك وأنعم على عبدك ورسولك محمد أفضل الخلق وأكرم الرسل وارض اللهم عن الخلفاء الراشدين الأئمة المهديين الذين قضوا بالحق وبه كانوا يعدلون أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعن سائر الصحابة والتابعين وعنا معهم بمنك وكرمك وإحسانك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم تقبل منا أعمالنا اللهم اجعلنا ممن قام رمضان وصام رمضان وقام ليلة القدر إيمانا واحتسابا واجعلنا ممن شاهد ليلة القدر فنال عظيم الأجر اللهم تقبل منا صيامنا وقيامنا وقراءتنا لكتابك يا رب العالمين اللهم تقبل منا صدقاتنا وجميع أعمالنا يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا كلها دقها وجلها سرها وعلانيتها عمدها وخطأها وكل ذلك عندنا اللهم أنج المستضعفين من المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم انصر أهل غزة اللهم كن لهم ولا تكن عليهم واحفظهم يا ربنا بحفظك الذي تحفظ به عبادك الصالحين واجعلنا يا ربنا أسبابا لهم وللمظلومين في كل مكان يا رب العالمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار عباد الله إن الله يأمركم بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله اكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون واقم الصلاه يرحمكم الله